Hello viewers, name a business activity which does not involve finance. It is difficult to find one. Finance is the life blood of every business. Just as circulation of blood is very essential in the living body, finance is also essential to smooth running of business. Many have termed finance as a universal lubricant which keeps the business running. Finance is an exciting, challenging and ever-changing discipline. In the real sense, it is the cornerstone of every business organization. For easy understanding of the concept of finance, this episode is divided into five subheadings, namely meaning and concept of business finance, need for finance, meaning of financial management, scope of financial management, choosing the right source of finance. Let us now first study the meaning of business finance. Every enterprise, whether big or small, needs finance to carry on its operations and to achieve its targets. In fact, today, finance is so indispensable that it is rightly said to be the lifeblood of an enterprise. Without adequate finance, no enterprise can possibly survive for a long time. So, in order to understand the meaning of finance, let us first look at some of the definitions of business finance. According to Gutmann and de Gaulle, business finance can be broadly defined as the activity concerned with the planning, raising, controlling and administering the funds used in the business. According to Prather and Wirt, business finance deals primarily with raising, administering and dispersing funds by privately owned business units operating in non-financial fields of industry. Literally speaking, the term business finance connotes finance of business activities. Thus, in order to develop the meaning of business finance, both the term business and finance are to be explained. The term business must be understood to embrace every human activity whereby man's wants are supplied, of course, in return for some profit. The activity may include manufacturing, trading, the practice of law, medicine, teaching, accounting, banking, transportation, provision of accommodation, entertainment, as in case of tourist businesses, etc. The term finance is understood as the provision of money at the time it is required. It refers to the management of flow of money through skills in the organizations. By joining the individual meaning of business and finance, we can develop the meaning of the term business finance as an activity, a process which is concerned with raising, administering and dispersing funds by business firms. Fields of Finance Finance can be understood in the five specialized areas. They are number 1. Public Finance Public finance refers to the financing activities by the central, state and local governments. The money which is received from many sources must be utilized in accordance with detailed policies and procedures enacted by the legislative body. Governments do not conduct their activities to achieve the same goals as private organizations. Businesses try to make profits whereas a government will attempt to accomplish social or economic objectives. As a result of these and other differences, a specialized field of public finance has emerged to deal with the financial matters of governments. Number 2. Securities and Investment Analysis The field of investment analysis deals with purchase of stocks, bonds and other securities and attempts to develop techniques that help the investor to reduce the risk and to increase the likely return from the purchase of selected securities. An investor must study the legal and investment characteristics of each type of security, 
measure the degree of risk involved with each investment and forecast probable performance in the market. Number 3. International Finance The study of flow of funds between individuals and organizations across international borders and the development of methods of handling these flows more efficiently are properly planned in international finance. When money crosses international boundaries, individuals, individual businesses and governments, it must deal with special kinds of problems. For example, each country has its own national currency. So, a person needs to convert his home currency into the currency of the country which is different from his own country in which he wishes to carry on with the business. This kind of problem can be addressed and solved in international finance. Number 4. Institutional Finance A number of financial institutions such as banks, insurance companies, pension funds, credit union represent a nation's economic structure. These institutions gather money from the individual savers and invest in more profitable securities and a return on this investment will be dispersed among the investors. Without these institutions, it is difficult to raise the readily available funds to finance business transactions and a variety of other activities that require organizations that perform the financing function of the economy. Number 5. Financial Management Financial management is concerned with the efficient acquisition and allocation of funds. In operational terms, it is concerned with the management of flow of funds and involves decisions relating to procurement and investment of funds in long term and short term assets and distribution of earnings to the investors. Since most of the business activities involve the use of funds, financial management has become to occupy an important role in modern business enterprises. Finance is needed to promote or establish a business, acquire fixed assets, conducting market surveys and other studies. For the convenience, let us study the need for finance through the following points. Number 1. To start a business. The need for finance is to be determined right from the conceiving the idea of starting a business. Depending on the nature and size of the business, purchase of assets, materials, employing people, etc., the need for finance is to be ascertained. There is also a need to ascertain the money to cover the business running costs, which may be some for time before the business generates enough cash from sales to pay for these costs. Number 2. To finance for expansions. When you start a business, you do not want to see that the business continues to remain in the same level throughout its business life. You have to plan the expansion of your business. Expansion may be in size, technology to increase the capacity, etc. New technology is not just dealing with computer systems, but also new machinery and tools to perform processes quicker, more efficiently and with greater quality and can be relatively expensive to the business and is seen as a long term investment because the cost will outweigh the money saved or generated for a considerable period of time. Number 3. To develop and market new products. As you can observe these days, the products have a pretty short life cycle. In fast moving markets where competitors are constantly updating their products, a product launched by a business will have a short life, maybe because of its features technology involved, prices, etc. Examples, cell phones, laptop, etc. So, a business needs to spend a lot of money on researching, developing and marketing new products. These costs are not normally covered by sales of the products for some time, if at all. So, money needs to be raised to pay for 
the research and development. Number four, to enter new markets. When a business seeks to enter into new markets to sell their products, they need to conduct the surveys regarding the feasibility of entering the new markets. These can be new geographical areas or new type of customers. This costs money. In terms of such surveys and marketing techniques like advertising campaigns and setting up retail outlets. Number five, to take over or acquisition of an existing business. When a business acquires another business, it will need to find money to pay for the acquisition. The acquisition may involve the investment of a huge sum of money. This money will be used to pay owners of the business which is being acquired. Number six, to pay for the day-to-day -day running of business. A business may require cash for its day-to-day -day operations, for example, paying a supplier for the raw materials, paying salaries, wages and other expenditure. This sum of money needed for the day-to-day -day operations of the business is known as the working capital. You will study about working capital in detail in episode 6. Before we understand about financial management, let us get to know some of the important definitions on financial management. Wheeler defined financial management as the activity which is concerned with the acquisition and administration of capital funds in meeting the financial needs and overall objectives of business enterprises. According to J.F. Bradley, financial management is the area of the business management devoted to a judicious use of capital and a careful selection of sources of capital in order to enable a spending unit to move in the direction of reaching its goals. In the words of S. C. Kuchel, financial management deals with the procurement of funds and their effective utilization in the business. The term financial management refers to the management of business finance. Financial management deals with the arrangement of sufficient funds for meeting short-term and long-term finance needs. These funds are procured at minimum cost so that profitability of the business is maximized. Financial management is indispensable to any organization as it helps in proper financial planning and successful promotion of an enterprise, efficient acquisition of funds as and when required at the minimum possible cost, proper allocation of funds, making sound financial decisions, improving the profitability through financial controls, promoting and mobilizing individual and corporate savings, increasing the wealth of shareholders, investors and the nation. Nature of Finance Management In a business concern, funds can be procured from different sources and therefore procurement of funds is always considered as a complex problem. A finance manager must consider the factors such as costs, risks and returns while mobilizing funds for the firm. The cost of funds should be a minimum and for that a proper balancing of risk and control factors must be carried out. Funds can be arranged through own sources of the firm or through borrowings from outside the firm. In a highly developed and planned economy, it is not difficult to raise funds but the utilization of funds is always poses great problems since funds are procured at a certain cost and their utilization entails certain risks. If the funds raised are not utilized efficiently, then the firm will find it difficult to service the funds properly which will result in the companies losing its value in the market. Thus, we can say that financial management deals with planning, organizing, directing, coordinating and controlling of financial activities.
as we discussed earlier, financial management is concerned with optimum utilization of limited resources, particularly in developing countries like India. Over the years, the scope of financial management has undergone significant changes from being a branch of economics to a full-fledged subject of study. Therefore, the scope of financial management can be divided into two broad categories, namely traditional approach and modern approach. Traditional approach. The traditional approach was lasted for about four decades. The scope of finance function was treated in the narrow sense of procurement or arrangements of funds only. The finance manager was treated as just a provider of funds when organization was in need of them. During this period, the role of finance manager was limited and it was during the major events such as promotion, reorganization, expansion, merger or diversification in the firm that the finance manager was called upon to raise funds. As per this approach, only the following aspects were included in the scope of finance management. A. Estimation of requirement of funds. B. Arrangement of funds from financial institutions. C. Arrangement of funds through financial instruments such as shares, debentures, bonds, loans, etc. D. Monitoring the accounting and legal work connected with the raising of funds. The traditional approach to the finance management scope has however suffered from many serious limitations. They are too much emphasis on long term issues. The first and foremost limitation of the traditional approach is that this approach laid too much emphasis on the long term issues and no importance was attached to the short term issues of working capital management and other related aspects. No involvement in application of funds. The finance manager had not been involved in decision making with respect to allocation of funds. He had been treated as an outsider and had been ignored in internal decision making process. Funds consigned only on industrial enterprises. The traditional approach was found to have another lacuna to the extent that its focus was confined only to a segment of corporate enterprises and non-corporate organizations were laid outside its scope. Too little attention on day-to-day -day financial activities. In traditional approach, the day-to-day -day financial activities are given lesser importance. It was almost felt that there was no application of finance in the day-to-day -day running of the business. As a consequence, many business enterprises face a downfall because of this misconceptions. Modern approach. In view of the limitations in the traditional scope of financial management, the modern thinkers considered that the scope of financial management should be enlarged so as to remove the shortcomings of the traditional view and provided a broad based conceptual and analytical framework for financial decision making in the form of modern approach to finance management. Modern approach considers the financial management as a vital and an integral part of overall management. According to this approach, the scope of financial management not only includes just raising of funds, but also includes the effective and judicious utilization of funds. The modern approach is an analytical way of looking into the financial problems of the firm. The principal contents of the modern approach to financial management are concerned with to provide solution of the following three major problems relating to financial operations of the firm, namely how should an enterprise be and at what rate should the enterprise grow, b in what form the firm should hold its assets and liabilities, c how to provide funds for day to day operations of the business firm. Nowadays, advice of finance manager is required at every moment whenever any decision with involvement of funds is taken. In other words, the association of finance manager has been continuous in every decision making process from the inception till its end. Thus, financial management in the modern sense of the term can be broken down into four major decisions 
as functions of finance they are a the investment decision b the financing decision c the liquidity decision and d the dividend policy decision you will study them in detail in the coming episode as we have learnt earlier in the traditional approach about various sources of finance such as shares debentures bonds loans etc a business firm needs to assess these different sources on the basis of the following criteria amount of money required the source of finance can be determined based on the amount of money needed for the business operations it may be worth noting that the requirement may be large or small depending on the size or type of the operations how quickly the money is needed another important criterion for choosing a source of finance is to see how quickly the money is needed there are situations where there is an urgency of finance for certain payments failing to pay for which would result in stoppage of operations in such cases the business would then have to accept a source of finance which is available but with a higher cost the cheapest option available the cost of finance is normally measured in terms of the extra money that needs to be paid to secure the initial amount generally the cheapest form of money to a business comes from its operating profits the amount of risk involved a project which has less chance of leading to a profit is deemed more risky potential sources of finance especially external sources like debentures and loans take this into account and may not lend money to higher risk business projects unless there is some sort of guarantee that their money will be returned the length of time of the requirement of funds it is another important criteria to determine whether the finance needed is for a long term or short term project and therefore decide what type of finance to be used to sum up finance is the life blood of every business there is seldom any business activity that does not involve finance business finance is a process of raising administering and dispersing funds by business firms There are several fields of finance namely public finance securities and investment analysis and finance international finance institutional finance and financial management Finance is needed to promote or establish a business for expansion to develop new products to enter new markets to acquire fixed assets conducting market surveys and other studies and for day to day running of business Finance management deals with the procurement of funds and their effective utilization in the business firms. The scope of finance management is divided into two categories: traditional approach to the scope of financial management and the modern approach to the scope of finance management. The traditional approach to the scope of financial management was narrower in the sense because according to the traditional approach, the finance management deals only with the procurement of funds. from various sources and monitoring accounts and legal documents modern approach to that scope of financial management stated that financial management covers a broader area of both procuring funds from various sources to the proper allocation of funds choosing of right source of finance is based on certain criteria such as amount of money needed quickness of money needed cheapest source available amount of risk involved and the length of time for which the money is needed